Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have one of my good friends, pro bodybuilder for years, Bill Grant, who I've known forever since day one from the golden era of bodybuilding, where we used to hang out together and work out together and do TV shows together and chase women together. And, uh, and we <laughs> yeah. actually did do that. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> I, I, name, I can name two of them right now. Oh, boy. Well, that's not, that, and that's I know where they live. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he's in town for a bodybuilding contest this weekend. Where is in Venice? Muscle Beach. Muscle the Muscle Beach, Beach show yeah. in Venice. And I think I'll take my little roving reporter camera down there and see if I can get some shots. Oh, I think you'll love it, Rick. You know that. You've been down there d over the years. Well, you know, from from when we were down there years ago, it's changed a lot. Oh, it's it's it's, it's really a lot better. I, I got to take my hat off to Joe Wheatley. He's done a great turnaround and yeah. renovation of uh, Muscle Beach. He's really uh, made it a, a place to go on the holiday if you want to see a bodybuilding show. He, he, I think he really has just legitimized bodybuilding at Venice Beach. Well... Back then, when they, when they dropped 20 people, 30 people maybe? Yeah. Now it's like 1,000? Yeah. More than that. More right. than that. You can't even stand around there. And they only used to have maybe five, six competitors. Now the guy's getting like 80, 90 competitors. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, it's just hard. You can hardly move. And they're coming not only from California. They're coming from all over the world. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's a testimony to what goes on on the Internet. We just talked about that right. before we went on the air. Right. Of how great using the Internet is a great way to promote it's not just around the corner. I think most of us have to think it's global. Yeah. It's around the world. People are seeing what you're doing. Some people don't get it. Well, we talked about that because Rick's Corner is around the world, and I get emails from all of you out there from all different countries who watch, and I can bring you into my, my world and Bill's world down to Muscle Beach to see what we actually do now, and then I try to take you back to see what we did then. Because back then, like I say, they maybe had 20 or 30 people, like spectators, mm -hmm. and the beach was vacant. I mean, it was nice and calm. Right, it was, right, It was right. nice and calm. You didn't have any vendors on the boardwalk selling anything, so you don't have a big influx of, of uh, people down there coming to buy stuff, like tourists. Right. But nowadays, it's just a whole different ball game, and um, they put money into it, and they've done a good job with it. Yeah, he's, he's really turned it around. Matter of fact, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley's going to be there tomorrow, and uh, that that's great. He's a... These are people that would have never come to Muscle Beach years and years ago. They probably knew about it, yeah. but they wouldn't come because it wasn't at that level that they would want to be at. No, it was but, a cult. Yeah, but now it's it, it's really changed, and, it, and I just love what's going on down there. I was just down there this morning. Uh, they were having boxing and martial arts. Yeah. Uh, there must have been a 1,000 people down there this morning. Well, it's one of those events where they have everything. Right, exactly. Yeah, they had that last year. They had all kinds of stuff. And, and it's a full spectrum of... Uh, event, you know, sporting event yeah. down there. Uh, it, it's it's really been a great turnaround, and I mean, you and I, after training for years and years, it was I guess you know before it was a cult thing, and it, yeah. it was just a few of us, you know, and we gather down to Venice Beach, and yeah. everybody crowd around and look. But now it's it's a whole different thing, and so you just gotta like what Joe Wheatley's done out there. He he's taken it a, to another level. Yes, he has. He's got good vendors too. You still have some guys come down, like Larry Scott, some of the old timers. Mm -hmm. um, is there anybody special this year? Uh, Rich Gaspari, matter of fact, is oh, going to be uh, getting the Muscle Beach Hall of Fame award along with Linda Murray, who's Miss Olympia. Oh, yeah. sure. So, I mean, it, this is really good. I mean, Rich Gaspari, everybody knows he's got Gaspari Nutrition, and, uh, you know, he, he's the one who kind of gathered around Shane uh, Mosley, Sugar Shane Mosley, to come out and give him the award. Angelica Houston's going to be there as well. I mean, look at the star studded lineup. It's pretty good. This was, this was 30 years ago. You would never see anybody like that at Muscle Beach. So, you can just see. They Alex laughed at really us 30 did. years ago. That's they right. laughed at us. They thought we were nothing but a bunch of muscle head <laughs> bums. But now, look at us now. We are now moving up in the world. Yeah. And we are getting that recognition that we should have had years ago. But hey, you know, I got time. It's we, only we, 40 we, years later. Yeah, hey, you you know, know, we got a lot of time, we're right? An over, we're an overnight success, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> That's what they say. Oh, those guys did that just it took a year. Yeah, you 40 know what? Years. But we were ahead of our time. Yeah, We, I we were we there were. before anybody was there. And, and bodybuilding was rare and it was a cult and we walked around and people looked at us like look at those guys are from outer space and you know Arnold was the hugest and so when they saw him they didn't know what to make of him exactly and Mike Katz would come out look like Frankenstein <laughs> always look like, all he needed is bolts in his neck and he had a little Franco look like a little gorilla <laughs> but you know but, but we had our cast of characters and they were a cast of characters and that's what made bodybuilding bodybuilding it did we, we everybody had their own unique personality yeah as not like today that's a good point because um, I was talking to somebody not long ago, and we were talking about lineups on stage. If you were to line up everybody in the 70s and just put a, a, maybe a mask on or something over their face, you could tell each person's body exactly. by, their, by the way they were built. Exactly. Today you line everybody up, and they all look the same. Exactly. And matter of fact, that brings the point uh, one time at the uh, Olympia that Arnold held. He actually had a <coughs> silhouette screen, and we'd come out and hit our favorite, you know, our 
favorite pose. Yeah. And everybody would have to guess who it was. We all had a you know signature yeah, pose. Yeah. I had mine like this, and Frank Zane had this or this one. Yeah. Arnold had a certain one. Robbie had a certain one. You know, Ken Waller had it, and everybody recognized. But we all had something different. We had our own unique individual personalities and, and our own looks. Now you you have supplements. Yes. You think the diet has changed a lot since then, or is it pretty much the same? Uh, well, I, I think these guys try and really today do a lot of different things. But you know, again, it's like you know, why try and fix the wheel if it's not? Well, broke? I'm I'm not getting into the drug. I'm not saying the drugs. I right. Right. That. Because the drugs are different. Right, today. yeah, yes. But is the diet different? Because pretty much the diet we had then worked. Well, yeah, it did. And it, it still did. works now. Right. And the fact of the matter is, is just think about this. Just think about this. We didn't do cardio back in the day. Nope. Think, we depended solely on our diet. That's right. These guys just kill themselves doing cardio. Why? I mean, we didn't have to do it. Ken Waller said, I never got big arms off a treadmill. That's right. And he never did. He never did any... Robots, neither did I, neither did you. Well, Arnold didn't do anything. There was nowhere to do anything. You didn't have treadmills or bikes in the gym. No. If you got, if you felt like you'd take a run on the beach. Right, exactly. And it was what, five minute run, 10 minute run? That's about, yeah, when we thought we were doing it something. It was mainly to look at chicks down there. Right, exactly. So you stopped and, and, and looked good. But there was no <laughs> cardio. It was all diet, and we kept our waist small and the body fat low. And uh, people have asked, and I'll ask you, all, did you diet all year round, or did you have an off season where you didn't diet? No, I, I didn't diet all year round. I, I was probably very fortunate because I had great genes. And I really didn't have to diet, but I did watch my eating up to the contest. But on the off season, we ate, we trained hard. It wasn't really an off off season, like stopping to train. We trained really hard even in the off season. Yeah, but all, all year round. As it got close to the show, what about I would say about three months before, then we dialed in. We yeah. started watching the diet. We changed our training habits a little bit more, and we trained even harder. Yeah. But but you still kept in shape throughout the year. Exactly. You didn't go crazy off, no. off junk food. And I, I know where you're going with that because the guys today, when you see them in the off season, it's like, what is this? Yeah. Why why would you gain 80 pounds on the off season just to lose it? I know. I don't. I, I, I have that questions. part I don't get. People write in questions to me about that. What what? How did you train so hard on low carbs? I don't know, but I was used to it. Yeah, we were. We we just ate. I think we ate just pretty good the whole time, really, Rick. I don't yeah. think we really kind of went off the deep end, off on the diet. No. We, I mean, look, we had steak and eggs constantly. Yeah. We were eating eggs, chicken, but fish. But we weren't eating egg whites then. No, no, we weren't. We were just eating the whole egg. The whole egg. So, we, and that's no yolk. That's <laughs> right. No yolk. I like that one. <laughs> no, we ate the whole egg, and I never thought about the yolk because real Blair's philosophy was you need a certain amount of fats to burn for calories. Exactly. But you limit your carbs when you take the fats. Right, exactly. So like, like Scott method or Ger or Geron And you increase the protein a little increase more. Increase the protein, increase the fats, drop the drop carbs. Drop the carbs. Uh, or you increase the carbs, drop the fats, because right, I right. did that too. Exactly. And I got in pretty good shape on that one time, which is fish and carbs. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible how the guys got in shape. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. You see, it, Waller was the hardest one to get in shape. But, I mean, he always got himself in shape. Well, he liked to eat. Yeah, he he loved to eat. He would kind of go overboard. And I, I can, when you talk about <laughs> liking to eat, I can remember we had a chicken eating contest at Dinah's Chicken. Remember Dinah's oh, back, back in the day? For all you people, Dinah's Chicken is restaurant is still there on Sepulveda Boulevard since we've been eating there. They have two of them now. They have one in Burbank, too. Oh, they do. Yeah. And the decor is almost just like it was back then. It's like the 50s. Yeah. It's like a 50s diner. And we, I remember one night we went in there. And all the guys like on I think it was Monday nights they all all the chicken you could all eat so could eat. we'd have a big table in the back maybe eight nine ten guys sitting there so Ken says let's see how much chicken you know how, who can eat the most chicken uh, fast forwarding I ate about twenty five pieces of chicken Ken ate thirty two and he said he was still hungry now remembering when you get the chicken the other uh, portion you still get the sides along with it remember the That's cream right. spinach yeah. the carrot you had to eat that too That's right. I can never believe I could eat twenty. Five and twenty-six pieces of chicken. Well, they also had good pancakes. <laughs> oh, it was great. The food, matter of fact, every time I I'm visiting L.A., yeah. I always meet Manny Perry there, and we have breakfast at Dinah's. Do you? Yeah. Still have it. Yes. Well, Waller also liked cottage cheese with honey. Oh yeah, the cottage he, he cheese. I remember to, that. He used to go to, uh, oh, it was, <laughs> I think it was Ships, one of those coffee shops on Washington. Ships. It was Ships. It yes. was Ships, and you get cottage cheese and honey and mix it all together and eat it, and then go down to. Colonel Sanders chicken and get chicken breast. Exactly. Pull the skin off. Now, if you think about it, cottage cheese, we just knew it was good. It was great. But it's whey protein. Yeah. Now, whey protein is the big thing. But we were eating whey protein a lot and didn't even wow. really recognize you know, I it. I ate cottage cheese every meal. Yeah. We didn't you guys really ask realize me what I ate. it. I had all cheese omelets and cottage cheese. That's right. And hamburger patties on, on my barbecue. Right. With a salad and cottage e cheese. E exactly. And I still eat cottage cheese because it's a good source of protein, protein. and calcium. Yeah. Whey protein. It's unbelievable. But 
We didn't really recognize that back then. It was no. a lot of whey protein, but we just knew it was good and we right. ate it. And you get the low-fat cottage cheese as well. Yeah. So I, I, I think we did, I really think we set the precedent on how to train and how to eat. Yeah. And I still think, and I like you, I still get emails, not from the, a lot, a lot from the older guys, but from the younger guys. And I got to tell you, they come up to me, they love everything that's going on today, they love watching the guys, but, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I just have to say, they always tell me, we want to look like you guys. That's, I hear that all the time. We want to look like you guys. You guys had I classical... Like, I want to look like us guys back then. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want to get back there again, too. They they claimed... we. They said we had great classical classical physiques that yeah. they liked. It, it had nice lines, not a, too much muscle, just enough. It looked great. I mean, it was well, really a beach that's body. that's what people like, and that's what women like. You see the guys today, no disrespect, they're huge. They're 280, 300-pounders. Yeah. And, and they're on the growth, and they're on the insulin, and everything else. And they look like fat men in clothes. Yeah, and it, I, they can't even walk. They just kind of sway back and forth. I don't find that attractive. No, and I don't. I don't think it's very healthy. And I, I feel really bad about the longevity part of it because yeah. remember, this is all about longevity as yeah. well. I mean, yes, we we bulked up. We did, did our thing back in the day. We didn't overdo anything. And most of the guys are still around. As you can see, a lot of the guys today aren't around. I mean, they're a gone. Lot of them are gone. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And it's like I'm worrying about their health another 25 years from now are they going to make it yeah so i'm really concerned about that part i love these guys today i see them all all the time but uh, i'm just like you know is it is it worth it i mean you know to, to overkill and overkill and overkill well somebody wrote into me they asked me how much testosterone i took back then i said i took 100 milligrams a week which is one cc a week i always yeah. thought one cc a week is plenty that's right he said it's impossible to get the kind of body you had on one cc a week it's not impossible that's what i took and I wouldn't even think of taking more than that. No, you know, we were, I was terrified just doing what I was doing. Yeah, I was scared to death because if I took more than that, I got a little blood in my urine one time. I said, well, that's the end of that. Yeah. And I quit taking it right away. But I always felt like if I took too much, I felt bloated. I didn't feel right. good. And it did, it, I, mean, I got scared health-wise, but yeah. it, it all worked for us. I mean, look at us. Well, it, and, it totally worked. And then you're talking about today's standards. You had also written, some of you written, and said that the guys today take 1,000 milligrams a week. And they do. And I know they do. That's 4,000 milligrams a month. That's wow. That's, That's crazy. That's what you should probably be that taking in a year. five IUs of growth hormone every other day. And then insulin, for, for, which is for diabetes, because it makes you grow. And I know it's necessary to win the Olympia to take that stuff. But my God, you're, you're, you're shooting poison into yourself on a daily it's, basis. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming... And, and many of you who write in don't even compete. Why do you want to do that? Just to walk around the streets and someone say, oh, wow, look how big he is? No one cares. Yeah, it's... it's Nobody it's, cares. I, I, I lived in, in Europe for three years, and I can remember uh, in Sweden, there was a guy who was just getting ready to work out. And he wanted to start, like, two months before he even started working out. I thought I was going to fall down. Yeah. Like... She didn't even start anything yet. Now you want to take something? Yeah, that, I hear a lot of that. What's, For what reason? What's wrong with hard training and a good diet? Hey, hey, that's what we that's what we did, and everybody saw it. We trained, trained. That's why they call it old school bodybuilding, exactly. and a lot of people are catching on to that. Even you see regular people in the gym, they talk about, hey, what about that old school bodybuilding? Yeah. And I work out of a club in New York on 3rd Street, and this is a high-profile club, and these aren't this isn't a bodybuilding club it's a personal training place and we only do personal training you've got older guys but they want to do the old school bodybuilding mm -hmm. stuff they've seen me they've seen the bodybuilding stuff and the old school thing is what they want to do and that's well, what we train old school them. everything look at and then just get off that subject a minute look at things that tools and things that were made years ago i have tools my dad had from the 40s they're steel they don't break i go buy tools at a hardware store and they last a week yeah and they break they because break it's a, the new school method of making them quick and getting it done and getting out cheap and it's the same thing with bodybuilding. Now they want to take everything you can to get big. And the minute you go off, you lose everything anyway. Exactly. You it's all, it, it all disappears. you got to build some real muscle. Yeah. And that means just getting in the gym, eating good, training hard. And even training at the beach, that <coughs> pit back then that we talked about, Venice Beach, there were very few machines. There weren't any machines. You had the uh, bench press, incline, you had a squat rack, you had maybe a T-bar. You didn't have any cables. Right. Dumbbells. I mean, yeah, and I, and I think about this. All these little fancy...